Good day everybody, I'm back for another tutorial. Today's tutorial, I'll be teaching about the benefits of Clip Studio Paint layer masking, as well as of the two of my favorite features which is the Clip to Layer Below and Transparent Locked. And also I'm gonna explain a little about how to use some basic layering and some of the most used blending modes. So let's get started. I'm about to explain the layers since we've been teaching beginners here and some beginners is having some hard time to understand some layering right away. So showing some traditional method will make it easier to understand for everybody. So basically, one layer is equal to a single sheet of transparent paper. And we always started with a blank. Adding layers on top of it is like adding a transparent sheet stuck into each other. Once you paint anything on transparent sheet, it will cover anything underneath it. So that is why it is preferable if you apply the line art to the top of all the layers so nothing will cover it. You can also switch the positions of layers by dragging it down or above of the other layers. You're also capable of hiding the layers when you click this eye icon within this box. And unhide it if you click it again. Right now, you'll be seeing white background because of the white canvas in the beginning. By hiding it, you'll be able to see the representation of transparent which is the grey and white checkered. You can rename the layers by double clicking on the current name of the layer. The special thing about digital art is the advantage of the layering features where you don't have to worry about the finished area while you're working on the other one. Alright, let's proceed to the blending modes. There's a lot of blending modes to choose from, but I'm only gonna explain 5 of the most used modes, and the rest can be experimented by yourself since most of it are similar to each other. Multiply. It is similar to color acetates. White is equal to transparent. The more multiply layer colors being piled up, the more it turns to black. Similar to cyan magenta yellow mixture on ink. It is also a good use on making shadows. Color dodge, similar to RGB lights. The more you stock a color dodge colors, the more likely it will turn to white, just like how the LED color lights works. Color and overlay. Two blending modes are commonly used for grayscale, but each of them has a little difference. Overlay only affects the tonal volume while the color will affect the saturation. Overlay color on top of 50% gray will remain the same color as what you've picked while color is a little bit lighter and vibrant. Then lastly, the screen, opposite to the multiply, is a great use when you're adding some effects to the characters or painting on a darker environment. It will turn the black into transparent. Instead of using PNG, this can be good replacement especially in flares or floating embers. Okay, now finally I'm done sharing those functions. Let us now proceed to the three functions that I really wanted to share. Transparent Locked When layer is being set to Transparent Locked, you're gonna see the icon on the layer. By then, you cannot paint anything outside of the existing paint when using that layer. This is a good use when changing the colors of the line art. This can also be good if you're painting starting with a silhouette. Remember to be aware of your silhouette of your subject. It is important when the subject being converted to silhouette, it should at least be readable to the eye of the audience. This helps the subconscious brain to see what's really going on to the image. Next is the clip to layer below. Ctrl Alt G for the shortcuts. Similar to transparent lock function, but this time you'll be using the other layer to paint, leaving the below layer unaffected. You can still paint outside the paint but being excluded visually and uses the clip layer as the basis. The advantage of this is you can stock an infinite amount of clipping layers into one layer. And you can also clip the layer to the folder, which means your working canvas is whatever shape inside that folder, where I use this for overpainting. This is also the great time to use different blending modes for your rendering. Create layer masking. Some might be intimidated to use this and never bother to experiment, but once you understand it, there's a lot of things you can do with it, especially when we want to avoid some image touch, when we want some portion to be excluded. Layer mask is a secondary layer where you can crop out some portion to hide it but still remains in the layer. The good example is whenever you want to add some objects 
to your subject, like a hat, and you want to keep the hat separated from the other layers. You need to hide some portion to make it look like being worn by a person. And by deleting those portion, it wasted the effort on doing that. So adding layer mask can help you crop those portion and keeping the layer unaffected whenever you want to reuse it sometime. By doing that, use a razor to hide those portion of the layer. You can also use a selection tool such as lasso to select the unwanted area, then hit delete. And masking within a mask is possible from folder to layer. When applying masking to layers, make sure you've selected the masking layer and not the drawing layer, same as on the folder. To show the hidden portion again, you can simply use brush or a pen on the layer masking. Now with that in mind, you can benefit from the texture of those brushes to add effect on it. To make use of those texture on erasing, use the transparent instead of the color. Instead of switching from pen to eraser, use the C key on your keyboard to switch to transparent. Now whenever you found the hat off-centered, you can uncheck the check mark between the layer and the mask. That check mark means the layer is being linked together and cannot be separated when being moved around. Once you've unchecked it, make sure you've selected the folder or the layer, not the masking. Then hit transform, control T for the shortcuts to make the object movable and move the layer on the side. You can move the layer without affecting the position of the mask. You can also use the masking for adding the shadow as well. Here's how. Hitting Alt Delete will fill out the entire canvas with the color you've selected with your pen and brush. Then change the layer to multiply. Then use the clip to layer below to make a basis on the subject. Then use a transparent color or eraser to add highlights. You can also do the opposite. Instead of adding light, you're gonna reveal the shadow. During the moment you've added the layer mask, you've added a white mask. Changing it to black will hide everything in the layer. To do that, you have to choose the transparent color, then hit Alt Delete. The color black in the layer masking means hide the portion of the layer, and white area means revealing what's in the layer. And gray is opaque, depending on how gray it would be. Gray can only be possible when you tweak the opacity or density of your pen and brush. Now you can use the pen with a normal color to add shadows on the areas. No matter what color you choose, it always applies black on the masking. You can also use blur and blending to the layer mask. Now it is easier to add subsurface scattering when you have clipping mask. Adding a layer mask means adding a completely different layer. If you click Ctrl click to the layer thumbnail, it creates a selection to the entire paint of the layer. But you can also do that on layer mask. It will be selecting the entire mask of that layer. With that in mind, you can select the shadow mask. Using the selection from that mask, you can create a new raster layer and slowly paint the subsurface scattering to the edge using the soft brush. Make sure to use the right color for it. Okay, we have some knowledge time. The logic behind the subsurface scattering is it only shows mostly at the edge of the shadows. That's the only place where the scattering underneath the skin will be strongly visible since the tonal contrast between the light and the shadow suddenly change. And the scattering light under the skin glows a little because the skin is a little translucent. And the other areas of scattering are subtle. Layer mask can also be transferable. You can transfer the layer mask to different layers by dragging the mask thumbnail to the other layers. And it can also be duplicated when you hold the Alt key then drag it. By this way, you can save it to an empty layer because it might be useful for later. Another function of mask, you can disable the mask by clicking the disable mask icon. It will hide the mask and reveals everything in the layer and displays X mark on the layer mask. The shortcut for this is to hold the shift key and click to the layer mask thumbnail. You can also click the arrow down on the icon to show another option which is revealing the mask area and it displays blue on the canvas. This is the area where you've added a mask. Shortcut for this is holding the Alt key and click the layer mask thumbnail. In years of experience using this function, there's also a little downside of it. Too many layers with a mask on, it takes processing power to your computer, so more likely it may slow down your application. That is why you should avoid adding masks to all of your layers, unless you have a powerful computer. That's also why there's a function where you can apply the mask to the layer so that it will get rid of the mask and merge it to the layer. 
There's a lot of things you can do on the layer mask. In fact, it is a feature that can be used on most applications, including video editing and special effects. I do believe there will be no too advanced when, when things being explained properly. And I hope I was able to do that. What do you think about masking? Have you think of anything you can use for it? Let me know in the comment section below. And that's all for today. And have a good day.